and away we go. So welcome into Shakuris Plateau. Spawning down here in the 7 o'clock position is our Red Protoss player, Remark. And spawning up in the 2 o'clock position, it's our Teal Zerg player, NMX Hendralisk. Uh, he's from the team Nightmares Gaming. Uh, is about all I can tell you about that, as we're still zoomed in a little bit. Now, I will admit to PVZ being probably my uh, worst matchup. But some things we can tell you about uh, PVZ on Shakur's Plateau. It's very easy to forge fast expand for the Protoss player, and you'll see that probably 75 to 80% of the time. Uh, as a Zerg player, you have a couple of choices to take your third base. Usually you'll see them just take this third base very quickly. Or you can even take the uh, a more popular choice, not a more popular choice, but a choice that's becoming more popular, is to take this front base, uh, as it gives you a little bit less area to try and defend, keeps all of your stuff very close together. Remark sending out a very early scout, maybe wary of his opponent doing an early pool. Uh, and not going to see anything too out of the ordinary from Hendralisk. In fact, not even sending out a scout. Uh, this Overlord going to be doing all of the scouting for him. As the probe sneaks into his opponent's base, you'll see that Hendralisk is going to pool first, which is a valuable set of information. It means that he'll need to be a little bit more cautious at the front, and he'll immediately throw down that forge in response, uh, just to make sure that he's a little bit better protected. Uh, if you see your opponent is going for a hatch first, you can go for uh, Nexus first, feel fairly safe that no Zerglings are going to come barreling down your front door. But Remark, going to be a little bit safer. This is a Master's League game. Uh, I actually have no idea where I got it. <laughs> Remark being annoying with this probe, as he does block the hatch for... Uh, a pretty good amount of time. He doesn't actually put that pylon down, which would be kind of a waste of minerals at this point, as he did see his opponent's pool, so a couple of Zerglings would be out. The only real advantage he'd gain is that his opponent's Zerglings would be attacking his pylon, rather than running at his front door, which we see is not quite uh, Zergling proof at this point. But getting a little bit closer, his Nexus is down about uh, halfway down already, so he's a little bit of a he ahead of his opponent's hatchery which is always a good advantage to have as the Protoss player. And Hendril is still without gas, just making a couple of Zerglings uh, to go scout about the map. And he should know where his opponent spawned. This Overlord's been pretty thorough with his scouting. Blech. Now he's checking around for a probe, uh, and he might even find it here. That's very nicely done by Hendralisk. And even hiding this drone to make sure it doesn't scout that third base. Very, very nicely done. Ah, I feel like I have to sneeze in case you're wondering. Ah. Don't you hate that? That annoying time when you feel like you you have to sneeze, but you just need to hold. Ah. So anyway, the wall off done for a remark. He's throwing down an, uh, his cybernetics core right here at the front. And we'll go into a very standard macro style game for these players. <coughs> but I can't, I can't state how nicely done that was by Hendralisk. He found his opponent's probe hiding up here. That probe was going to be for scouting or for a proxy pylon later on. And uh, he denied the scout and then didn't allow him to see the drone that was over here to plant the third base. So if Remark wants to see that third base, he'll have to send another scout. And uh, that wastes, you know, a little bit of resource time. He does have these two gas geysers done, but not harvesting anything out of them immediately as he transfers some probes down to his natural. The uh, warp gate research... Okay, so we got uh, 58 gas, it looks like, to start that warp gate research. And I'm actually completely wrong. So he's harvested a total of 150 gas. Uh, this plus one weapons is actually going to line up very well with the, his cybernetics core, or his warp gate timing. And he could hit just a really nice plus one timing attack uh, with four gates, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So this is basically a variation on the old school four gate build. It's a forge fast expand where you follow up with the plus one weapons, and everything will hit at about the same time as your uh, 
work gate finishes, and this is really tight. And, uh, oh my heck. Well, I don't know if you can actually support that Mitch, but uh, this could be quite ridiculous. This uh, stopper actually getting very annoying and having to uh, microwave. I actually remember where I got this from, but I'm not going to say uh, immediately. There's a proxy pylon going down here, another one going up here, there's a third one here. He's going to put down a fourth one. And uh, I believe, as the kids say, shit is about to get insane. All of those warp uh, gateways are finishing up. Warp gate must finish. And look at all these transforms. So Zealot's warping in, in the middle of the map, chasing off these Zerglings. There's a whole bunch of roaches on the way from Hendralis, at uh, 12 of them. And the Zealot's moving to the third base. And uh, all these proxy pylons giving him really valuable opportunity to warp in. In come the Zealots into the natural at the same time, forcing his opponent to multitask. The Zealot's moving in, taking down a bunch of these workers, and uh, handicapping his opponent's economy, taking down the Gas Geyser, although I'm not sure why. And now even dealing with the roaches, Pretty equal numbers. Zealots still over here at the natural uh, doing damage. More workers falling very quickly. Getting this around on the roaches. There goes the queen. The queen's been killed up here as well. If we look at the workers killed, it's uh, only been nine so far, but he's killed, uh, I believe it's three queens so far. A bunch of these drones being pulled uh, away from the zealots. There's a couple of roaches in here actually dealing the damage while the drones kind of tank it for them. Now targeting down the Roach War and the Natural going to fall. More Zealots warping in, coming toward the third base. But he takes down more and more Roaches. And if we look, the supply gap is very quickly closing. Uh, as remarked, just warping in all mass Zealots. Now going to take out another Queen here. The Roach War and actually is going to live briefly while he kills more Zerglings, more drones going down as well. And this is just non-stop pressure from Remark. Nearly, uh, he's actually closed the supply gap up by three supply now as he chases off more of his opponent's army. Uh, 34 drones have gone down now. More zealots warping in. Now trying to deal with the roaches. Remark falling back just a little bit to catch up uh, with his zealots here. And I'm not sure what Hendralis can do. He's done as well as he can. But the non-stop zealot pressure by Remark is astounding. And one Zealot actually splitting off. He's going to take down a Roach War in there. That goes. Another Queen is out. More <laughs> Zealots walking in. This looks exactly the opposite. Usually you see the Zerglings swarming into the Protoss base, not the Zealots swarming into the Zerg base. This third base is going to go down, and I think Hendralisk is just dead at this point. There with the Queen. Uh, there are a couple of Roaches and Zerglings still here trying to clean up everything, but it's not going to be very effective. Nice hole position micro, so these Zealots are kind of just wigging out here. More drones going down, more zealots warping in, and we see 44 workers killed now, and that's basically it. There's the GG from Hendralisk, and just a fantastic strategy by Remark. Uh, I've... <laughs> I've been looking in the strategy section on Team Liquid, looking for some unique replays. I think this certainly qualifies, now that I remember where I found it. Uh, the Gateway Flower with the Artosis Pylon is a little bit ridiculous here, but 10 Warp Gate Pressure with a plus 1 attack, and uh, the plus 1 attack, of course, critical, because then Zealots can 2-hit Zerglings, and then non-stop Zealots into your opponent's base. Uh, that was pretty fantastic. So thank you for Remark for posting that on the Team Liquid forums, and hopefully this is a build you guys can copy, because that is really cool. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, follow me on Twitch TV right below. Uh, just click that nice follow button. You can uh, email any feedback you have to marismaticsc at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.